slam stems look cool. There is simply no escaping it. Whilst we might not all be able to ride comfortably with our stem slammed, I'm sure many of us would like to be able to. After all, it gives you that pro look, doesn't it? It does. It's a statement of intent that says, I'm a serious cyclist. One that's experienced and has been riding long enough to develop the requisite core strength, flexibility, to be able to ride in an aerodynamic, aggressive, and faster position. So in this video, we're gonna give you some tips and tricks to help you get into a more aggressive riding position and check out the new modern saddle tech, courtesy of our friends at Physique, that allows you to do so with more comfort. Yes, a slammed stem is not for everyone. In fact, for most people, in all likelihood. But if you're concerned with speed, it's probably the optimal position. However, to actually go faster requires a bit of extra knowledge. So just in case you're confused about what we're going on about when we say slamming your stem, it's the process of removing the spacers beneath your stem and then pushing the stem into its lowest position that it can fit onto on the bike. Now, this is something that you often see on pro riders' bikes, and that's because pros like to get as low at the front end as possible. This can have an aerodynamic advantage, and it can also lower your center of gravity, which can help cornering. And it also looks cool. It does. Now, irrespective of whether you want to slam your stem completely or just lower it a little, doing so does have the potential to make you faster for free. Check that out, Ollie. Minus yeah. 20 degrees of rise, 120 mm length. Slam. Yeah, mine's, yours is longer than mine. Mine's just 110 uh, millimeters long and uh, it's not quite slammed. I've lowered it compared to what I normally do. I'm gonna try it lower today, but yeah. I still have a few spaces in there. You know what, I've heard on the internet you can get completely flat top caps that are just three mil in thickness if you want to go the full hog and slam it properly. Okay. Nothing will do more for your ability to maintain an aero position than training in that position. And you don't have to start out by training too quickly either. We recommend a lower intensity and shorter efforts to get going. Think of blocks of around five minutes. This will help all of your muscles adapt to getting into that honed position. Off the bike flexibility exercises can help too, such as stretching and yoga. And remember, it may be a question of strengthening muscles rather than trying to increase their range of movement. Wind tunnel testing has shown that for the majority of riders, having your hands in the hoods and not the drops, will present lower frontal area from your forearms. So aim to get these parallel to the ground and keep your shoulders hunched. All right there, Ollie. Yeah, that's, that's all well and good, Chris. I mean, I've done everything you've said, but I'm finding it a bit uncomfortable, to be honest, mate. I'm a bit concerned about the family jewels. Oh dear. Well, Ollie, I'm glad you mentioned this because it is indeed quite a common complaint. Riding in a more aggressive aero position slammed at the front does indeed place a little more pressure onto the gooch or to the more medically minded amongst you, the perineum. Luckily though, there is a solution and one that's often prescribed by bike fitters worldwide. And that's the relatively recent introduction of the short snub nose saddle. These shorter saddles enable you to get into a much more comfortable position while slammed on the front of your bike. They're more stable in the middle, but they have a shorter nose, which essentially removes that pressure point. The channel in the middle that takes care of that pressure relief can be found on all sorts of different types of saddle. The short nose also does another very important job. It allows you to move the saddle forwards while still staying within those pesky UCI rules that stipulate that the nose of the saddle needs to be at least five centimetres behind the bottom bracket. That puts the bit of the saddle you sit on further forwards. I mean, why would you want that? Well, it's all to do with the hip angle. The theory is that sitting on a short nose saddle allows you to rotate your pelvis further forwards, which is crucial for maintaining an open hip angle, which allows you to better recruit the most powerful muscle groups and also recruit them in their most effective range of motion. 
Basically, as you lean further forward, you need to shift your bum further forward in order to maintain a powerful pedaling position. Whilst this is almost certainly possible on a standard saddle, such as my Arione, it's almost guaranteed to be more comfortable on a saddle designed specifically with that purpose in mind. Not rotating your pelvis will result in a more closed hip angle. It will be harder to recruit your glutes, but it can also put more pressure on your lumbar spine. Lots of brands do now have a short nose saddle in their range, but today we've got the Physique Vento Argo, which I have in my hands, and the Tempo Argo. As you can see, the Argo is noticeably shorter than the saddles Ollie and I usually use on our bikes, the Physique Arione. The Vento is tailored more towards racers with a dropped nose, a wide pressure relief channel, and low sprung foam density. Just a quick note and tip for you, if you're thinking of trying a short nose saddle, but you're normally using well, a normal length saddle, then a good way to fit it to your bike is to actually measure it from the bars to the back of your existing saddle and replicate that measurement with the short nosed one. Then begin to move forward. Now, whilst I do find the look of a slam stem appealing, and I'm sure many of you at home do as well, we are by no means suggesting you do this at home unless you are 100% confident in what you're doing. If you are gonna slam your stem, test it out first before you commit to cutting the steer tube because that is something that you cannot undo. Not everyone is bothered about being more aerodynamic on the bike, but if you are, then getting lower and having a more aggressive position at the front is one of the best things that you can do to get faster. And you don't have to go fully slammed like Chris does. You could just lose one centimeter and go one centimeter lower or get better and more used to riding in the drops. Doing both of those things takes a bit of time to adapt to, but they're likely to give you wattage savings that are, well, roughly equal to a really expensive set of deep section wheels. Both are worthwhile doing and, well, a short nose saddle can help. I think that's a very good point, Ollie, but it's also worth pointing out, we are physically all very different and it could well be that you try slamming your stem and for whatever reason you don't get on with it, discomfort or actual pain. If that's the case, then you would be better off putting your bars back up to where they were, you'll be more powerful and likely therefore faster. Yeah, now I hope you found this video informative and useful and if you have then please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to support the channel then you can do so by clicking subscribe down there and also the bell icon too and let us know in the comments how you've got on experimenting with lower positions and potentially slamming your stem and if you'd like to see a video on adjusting your bar stem or headset click just down there that's going to be useful i like that topical Good. Nice.